Welcome to Hydra Show, the UK's alternative gardening TV show. Here's Nick with what's on the last episode of the season. Coming up on today's show, we find out the results of the first Hydro Show grow test, soil versus hydroponics versus aeroponics. The girls make some ELU style hydroponic systems in the last presenter challenge. Grow supplies of Newcastle give us their attempt at a hydroponic mega room. And we take a look at new ballast technology with Steve from Sol Digital. All this plus news, another competition and more, only on the world's first hydroponics TV show. Back in episode one, I visited Aquaculture Hydroponics in Sheffield, where we set up our first grow test. Here's a quick recap on what the grow test was about and what we intended to find out. Okay, so what's this first grow test all about? Uh, well, the aim of this is really to set up, uh, we've got the one system here with, that's possible of doing a lot of different methods of growing, and the aim is to really show the difference between Different, three different methods of growing with cheese and so we've got hand watering, uh, a drip system and an aeroponic system um, so just going to show the difference in the vegetative growth that you can get between them all. So to start with we've got the hand watering system uh, it's basically just a collection tray, four pots which we'll be filling with soil and hand watering from uh, a bucket basically. With the drip system we'll be filling these pots with cocoa the uh, drip lines are connected to your pump you have one stake going into each pot and then you time your irrigations as and when they're needed watering. Okay. With the aeroponic system, there's no media in the pots at all. Uh, you just have a sprinkler at the top of the pot. That sprinkler is connected directly to the pump and the pump runs 24 seven, constantly sprinkling out your, your water onto the root zone. We're using the same uh, seedlings for each, each one, so you, you know, you're not gonna expect wildly different growth on different mm. types of seeds and plants. But mainly it's just to try and keep all the variables the same. So things like nutrient as well, we're going to be using the same nutrient between each system. Okay, so I'm guessing now it's time to set everything up. Can yeah. I help you with that? Of course you can, yeah. Let's get to it. Okay. Now you just need to water them in. Okay. There you go. So you just water them as yeah. if you're a water plant. How much? Probably about a quarter to a half of that jug each. So on to the next. I'm guessing this is the dripper system. I've uh, got it half set up here, so it's uh, now just a case of attaching the, the drip lines to the delivery pipe, which is connected to the pump, uh, putting the pots on and then potting them up. So the water you just used to water this, is that exactly the same as we did with the soil? No, uh, cocoa is inert, basically meaning it contains no nutrient, so whatever water you put through it, you need to add whatever nutrient you want to that pot to contain. Right. Before you plant your plant out, otherwise there won't be any nutrient value in there. Okay, nice. So this system is the aeroponic system. We've got it half set up at the minute. We've got the, uh, the pump in the reservoir connected up to the, the main delivery system at the bottom of the tray. So now it's just a case of making sure the sprinkler heads are in position in the pots and then connecting those to the delivery system. So with this you screw the spray head through. Attach the line. And then connect that to the delivery tube. Okay. So the water is pumped up through the delivery system, through these tubes, uh, and the spray head rotates and sprays the water inside the pot oh, onto the bare roots. Here with these, uh, they have net pots which you put the, the base of the plant. Eventually the roots just grow through these, hang down in the pots and the sprinkler system delivers the water directly to the roots. Okay. So to plant them in, you just simply drop your jiffy into the, the net pot and you need to be particularly careful when you're putting the collar around it, just not to damage the, the seedling. Mm is the tricky bit. Yeah. So now Nico, what are these cups on here for? What, what are we using these cups for to protect uh, these? Yeah, they're just essentially like a makeshift humidity dome because uh, they're quite young seedlings really they should have been hardened off a little bit longer but for the uh, time restrictions of the tests we just 
using these as a little makeshift humidity domes to keep the humidity up. Ah, oh, clever. So, Nico, is this where we leave them now? Is this what we leave them just here, like this? Uh, it is, yep. They're, so, they're going to remain in these positions for the next six weeks, really, until you guys come back and, and see how much growth there's been on them. And how often are you going to have to water these now? It's slightly different for each one. Um, the soil and the cocoa, they're probably not going to need water in, you know, once every three or four days. The e easiest way to do it is to pick up the pot, feel how heavy it is, until it feels light and it's drunk the water in there, don't water it again. Usually every three or four days-ish, but that obviously can change. With the ones in the aeroponic system, uh, usually they'd be planted out with a slightly more developed root system. So to start with, they're going to have to have probably a 15 minute irrigation every day or so. Um, and then I'll just have to keep a close eye on the root system so I can, to know when I can turn it on 24-7. Okay then, well thinking about that, how are you going to keep the test fair then? Well obviously you've got the nutrient tank, um, as long as you, you keep, maintain the nutrient tank, keep a close eye on that to make sure that the nutrient content is even throughout each system and you can be fairly sure they're all getting roughly the same amount of food and it should be as fair as it, as it can be. So just to summarise, how long will it take now? When, when can we come back and look at these? Well, like I say, if you can, you can come back in six weeks, we should have a fairly decent amount of vegetative growth, but you're probably not going to see any flowers on them by then. But if, you, you know, if you're available to come back a few months down the line, then there'll definitely be pep peppers and chilies on there. Fabulous. Well, we'll see you in six weeks then. Yes, we will. Thank you very much. And that's it. Looks like we're coming back in six weeks. Great stuff. Stay tuned to see the results of the grow test coming up in part two. It's that time again. It's time for the presenter challenge. Let's find out what's in store this week. Thank you. This is your final presenter challenge. In the studio, you will find an array of goods from a certain Swedish furniture store and a few basic items from a hydroponics store. Your challenge is for each of you to make your own DIY hydroponics microsystem using the equipment provided. To help you, there are two ELU books for inspiration. Let's go. Having read the DIY system book, the girls have decided which of the systems they're going to build. Having less than a year's hydroponic knowledge and even less DIY skills, the girls decided to keep it simple and go for the following systems. Gemma has gone for number eight, solution A. Using a tray with a lid, her system will incorporate eight two inch net pots and have an air stone in the tray. This system uses minimal growth medium in the net pots just to provide the root system with something to keep her plants upright. Pooja is going for the same system, however solution B. Her system will incorporate six 3 inch net pots and a layer of clay pebbles in a tray. There will be no air stone in Pooja's system, however the plants having more space will make it less crowded in the growth area. Later on in the show, we'll see the girls making the systems. Still to come on Hydro Show. The girls make some ELU style hydroponic systems in the last presenter challenge. We interview Vitalink at Grow Expo 2012. Grow Supplies of Newcastle give us their attempt at a hydroponic mega room. And we take a look at new ballast technology with Steve from Sol Digital. All this plus news, another competition and more only on the world's first hydroponics TV show. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Manchester Grow 2013 brings you hydroponic innovations from all around the world. From nutrition to systems and from lighting to pest control, you'll find every aspect of indoor gardening here. So come on down and speak to the experts. Trade day, Saturday the 21st of September, Public Day, Sunday the 22nd, over 16s only. Entry £20 on the door. For more information, visit www.grow2013.com. 
At Holland Hydroponics, you'll find a wide variety of hydroponic systems, accessories, plant nutrition and the latest hydroponic innovations, always in stock. Visit a Holland store on Friday the 14th of June and get 10% off everything in store. Holland's Hydroponics, open in Manchester, Burnley, Huddersfield and our new store in Flint, North Wales. Hello, I'm Brad. And I'm Matt. Welcome to South Coast Hydroponics. Are you ready for bigger yields? Use the Advanced Nutrients Bigger Yields Growing Systems for the optimum results. Hobbyist. Expert. Professional. Grandmaster. More info at www.advancednutrientsuk.co.uk. Do you want a nutrient that matches all the requirements of any plant you choose to grow? Well, let us introduce to you the aroma formula. So variable, it fits all the plants you want to grow indoors. Speed up plant growth. Increase yields. Trusted by the professionals. Results you can easily see for yourself. The aroma formula. Now available at all fine hydroponic shops. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Back in September 2012, we interviewed some of the industry's experts at Manchester's Grow Expo. Here's what happened when Gemma caught up with Callie from Vitalink. So now we're talking to Callie, and Callie's a research scientist, and the product Callie's brought with her today is a Vitalink plant start. Okay. So Callie, I'm going to ask you the first question. Um, at what stage in the plant growth cycle would we use plant start? Well, Plant Start's been specifically designed for cuttings and seedlings. It's a weaker nutrient solution, so you can use it to pre-soak your blocks or any media that you're designed to use, or use it in your actual uh, propagator uh, in aeroponics. It's designed for the first two weeks of the life cycle of the plant, and it aids with uh, increasing rooting at an earlier stage. Great stuff. Now, you're studying for a PhD in fertiliser chemistry, so now I'm going to ask, did you develop this product? I did, um, with Sheffield Hallam University, we did extensive research on it, and particularly the calcium and the boron, which is, encourages the rooting a lot earlier in the plant. Um, interactions have been proven to show that uh, calcium and boron cause certain hormones to be moved from the leaf surface down to the, where the cutting's been taken. Um, it took about a year's work of development, but anyone who uses it will definitely see the results. Why would you not just use a half strength growth nutrient? Why would you use this? Well, a half strength growth nutrient will still have very high levels of your nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus, which for young plants can be poisonous. But when you half the strength of a, uh, a growth nutrient, elements such as iron, Magnesium, uh, manganese, boron, copper are also hard, but these are very important for the rooting of the plant, so we need to keep them up at a higher strength. Vitalink Plant Start has been designed with both of these micro elements at higher levels that you would normally find in a full strength nutrient, but keeping those macro elements, your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, at lower levels. As mentioned earlier, the calcium and boron are also at very specific levels that interact and cause that rooting to be initiated a lot earlier. Right. 
And finally, where can we get more information on this product? Where could we get this from? The best place to go is www.vitalink.eu. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you for having me. We interviewed several other companies at Grow Expo 2012. If you'd like to see those interviews, please visit our official YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash hydroshow TV. I'm joined by Andy Irving from Dutch Garden Supplies. We're here at South Coast Hydroponics near Portsmouth and Andy's got the BioWave to show us here. Um, Andy, what is this? Um, this is a new product that's been three years in the making from uh, a company called BioWave Industries. Okay. Um, basically it improves uh, yield, improves bricks production within a plant. Um, that particular model there is capable of doing the size of a football pitch. A football pitch? Yeah. So, so for people at home that might want something a little bit more small, is there something else on the market? Yeah, very, very soon the release of the BioWave Mini, right, which will cover approximately 500 square foot. Okay. So how does it how does it achieve these results? What does it actually well, do? Well, basically, it's uh, emitting subsonic harmonic frequency to the plant. So basically, it's talking to the plant, right? Uh, which in turn open dilates the stomata of the plant, um, allowing CO2 to be taken in, uh, improves nutrient uptake, and as I say, with with yields, um, there's an increase of an average of 20 percent. Okay. Bricks, which is the sugar intake, is around 15 percent. Okay. So um, the, there's a lot of increase and in, like the higher bricks production, the healthier the plant. If you were to sum it up, the benefits in a few words, what would you say? Um, yield. Yield is, for everybody, is the most important, you know, because for a cost of £1,100, you need to be increasing your yield significantly. Um, and as I say, if you can get the average of 20%, the product will soon pay for itself. Right. Andy, thank you very much for showing us the BioWave. It's a pleasure. <laughs> In our official magazine Hydro Mag, we often get questions from readers asking for help with their grow rooms. Well, last time Bill from Growing Age Technologies was in the UK, we asked him to answer some of these questions. Bill has over 30 years experience in hydroponics and has worked with all sorts of hydroponic projects including vegetable and orchid societies. So let's see how he answered a few of the Hydromag readers' questions. Do I need to keep my fans on all the time? It's pretty cold where I live so I don't really need them on to cool the room down but I'm thinking they might need to be on for air circulation. How do I work out accurately if my room has good air circulation? If you have good air cir circulation in your room, you're still going to have a buildup of humidity within the garden. So we need to go and have that air pulled out. Now we have again mentioned that we have good air circulation and good fans in there. We have not stated whether they're blowers to take the air out of the room or if they're oscillating fans that are pushing the air around within the room. What you, we do require for a good strong grow room is to have a fan that's pushing the air around the room because the simple fact is that you have a canopy of plant material, leaves and flowers and fruit. What ends up happening that becomes a block for the air movement. So the internal part of the plant could actually have stale carbon dioxide, high humidity levels and running into problems from this. So by having an oscillating fan blowing the air around the room, we're changing the air constantly within the plant's body. And the, the exhaust fans is gonna take this high humidity and stale air for lack of carbon dioxide and oxygen and remove it from the grow room, bringing in fresh air from outside with new CO2 and new oxygen for the plants to go and breathe. I'm a big fan of plain old traditional soil. Outdoors it is so easy to use, anyone can do it. I've never had much success with soil indoors though. Do you have any tips for growing with soil under a high pressure sodium lamp? If I was to switch to using a different medium, which do you think would be best for an old stick in the mud to pick up? When we do the transition from coming from outside, which nature looks after us, outside, you plant your seeds in the spring, or you take your shoots that you bought from your nursery and you put them into the soil. 
you allow them to grow. Now, once you move the plants inside, we must play Mother Nature a little bit more. We must provide the proper amount of lighting so that the plants will not reach and stretch for the light. We must provide the proper temperatures and humidity in the room. By providing the proper temperatures and humidity and the light that the plants require in a good growing medium, the plants will flourish quite nicely. Here's a situation for you. You ask me what type of growing medium. All growing medium to me is, is to separate the roots from each other. The plants have evolved adjusting the pH of the growing medium to bring the nutrients into their easier form for the plant to consume. So what growing medium you choose is not really a big factor here. It's how you apply the water and the nutrients to that growing medium and the system that you've incorporated into. All good hydroponic systems have a reservoir, a volume of water that's below the growing chamber. And then you have the growing chamber, which is at least one inch above the height, maximum height of the water that's going to be in your nutrient solution. Turn on a pump, automatically water it, set your timer, automatically water it, and let the pump look after it. Please go down into your room quite often to check to see what's going on with your room to make sure that everything is working properly, your pumps are working, your fans are working, your light is actually turning on and off. I have a problem in my cellar where small black flies seem to appear out of nowhere. I haven't seen them on my plants, but I can't watch them all the time. Will these bugs cause me any issues? And if so, how should I fight them? Scary flies or fungus gnats are the same thing. What they look for is they look for rotting vegetation in the upper part of the growing chamber. Once they go and lay their eggs in there, their larva starts crawling through the growing medium, consuming roots and dead organic material. And if they go get into your plants with a big infestation, what they will, can actually go and do is they can cut your roots off and not allow the plant to be able to pick up the necessary nutrients and water that they need to grow. Also, when roots start getting cut, what ends up happening, you leave an access point for diseases such as pythium to enter the plant and create a real problem for you. If you start to notice that your pH is dropping in your nutrient solution, this is the time to go and do corrective medicine towards your pH. But also, what we need to do is get rid of the uh, scary flies or fungus gnats, and you're having problems noticing them. What you can also go and do is you can put yellow sticky sticky tape around the room and they will be attracted to this tape. If you that if you do not have access to that, what you might want to try is taking some very fruity wine and putting it into um, tall bottles with very narrow necks. These flies cannot fly in a straight line. They do go in different directions as they try and move to wherever they're going to go and land. So they will have a hard time coming up out of the top of the bottle. And they will basically drown in the wine if, if they try to drink it. What a way to go, getting drunk and dying. Now it's time to return to aquaculture to see the results of the HydroShow Grow Test. I'm back here at Aquaculture with Nico. Now it's supposed to be summer, but it's absolutely chucking it down. It's been about eight weeks since we transplanted our seedlings, so let's see how they're getting on. Hi Nico. Hiya. Okay, so let's see how our seedlings have been getting on. Can you just give us a quick recap on what we were aiming to achieve here? Yeah, we are just uh, basically looking to see the difference between uh, different methods of growing. So we've got the hand water in soil system, got a cocoa drip system and the aeroponic system and it was just to see which would give us the quickest uh, vegetative growth overall. So before we look at our chilli plants, did you notice any differences between the systems in the early stage of growth? Uh, yeah, quite a significant difference really. Um, the soil and the cocoa plants took off a lot quicker. Um, they're a lot quicker to establish in the pots, particularly the soil. Uh, as soon as the root system was established in the aeroponics though, they quickly caught up and their growth became a lot a lot quicker than the, the other two. Why was that? Mainly due to the availability of the oxygen in the aeroponics system. You know, they're just dangling in air, there's a lot of available oxygen, it just helps with the uptake of nutrient. 
So we can clearly see a difference in the size of these plants. Can we just point out which is which grow method here? Okay, so on the right here, we've got the hand-watered pots uh, in soil. In the middle, we have the cocoa pots on the drip system. And on the far left over there, we have the aeroponic system. So we can see the aeroponics has a lot better growth and not so much from the other two. Are these the results you expected? Uh, yeah, I mean, when the aeroponics had the established root system, it always expects a lot quicker growth from that, that type of system. Um, if you can see here, the actual height difference between the, the soil and the cocoa is not massive. Um, however, there is a lot more uniformity between the cocoa plants. Uh, they're all a lot more even sized than the soil plants, which is always a benefit mm -hmm. in the system. So what I don't understand is, I can see the chilli plants in the soil and the cocoa, you know, I understand how they grow from the root system, but how is it working in the aeroponics? What's going on here? How, how is that a growth medium? Well, there is no media in the aeroponics. Uh, the roots literally just hang in mid-air, being sprinkled into. Um, one thing is it doesn't give the plant as much support as you would get with cocoa and soil, so when you do get a larger plant that's a lot more top heavy, you will need to support it up a lot more. Um, but that sacrifice, you know, you get a lot quicker uh, nutrient uptake because of the more available oxygen. Can we have a look at that? Of course, yeah. So there's your root oh, system wow. there. That's crazy. Obviously as the plant gets larger, the root system will just get larger and larger. So we can see the aeroponic system is the quickest way of growing from this test, but what can the viewers at home take from that? Well, basically if, uh, you know, if time is a concern, if you've only got a short period of time to, to get a crop in, then aeroponics would be the obvious choice. You get a lot quicker vegetative growth, probably save yourself a couple of weeks over your whole crop. Mm. And if you're only ever looking to get three or four crop cycles in per year, you could possibly get another one in with all the, the time cumulatively saved. So there you have it. Eight weeks ago, we set out to show the difference in vegetative growth between three methods of growing. It's quite clear to see that growing your plants aeroponically will encourage quicker vegetative growth. So for a little bit more money and no extra hassle, you may actually be able to fit in an extra growth cycle per year for the time you save. For more information about the Hydro Show Grow Test, you can read a feature in issue 6 of our official magazine, available online and in stores from September 2013. It's now time for the last competition of the series. It's the last weekly competition of the season. At the end of Hydro Show Season 1, we're giving away a growth system of your dreams, including a full agrotent vertical growing system, full ventilation kit, two complete digital lighting ballasts, a set of plant nutrients, all courtesy of Ecosystem. The prize worth over £3,000 will be drawn at the end of season one in September. And best of all, it's completely free to enter. Up for grabs this week is a range of nutrients and additives formulated for use for cuttings to harvest. This episode's weekly competition is sponsored by Advanced Nutrients UK. Entering this week's competition is simple. All you have to do is like the competition image on our Facebook page. The winner of the weekly competition will be selected at random after Sunday's show and contacted anonymously through Facebook. Still to come on Hydro Show. The girls make some ELU style hydroponic systems in the last presenter challenge. Grow supplies of Newcastle give us their attempt at a hydroponic mega room and we take a look at new ballast technology with Steve from Sol Digital. All this, plus news, another competition and more, only on the world's first hydroponics TV show. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine.
With stores in Barnsley, Ripley and this superstore in Sheffield, Aquaculture is the obvious choice for Yorkshire's hydroponic gardeners. Fully stocked with the latest and greatest hydroponic products, at Aquaculture we pride ourselves on quality service and advice. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, come and see our greenhouse facility in Sheffield and we'll show you how hydroponics really work. Aquaculture Hydroponics, stores in Barnsley, Ripley and Sheffield or online at www.aquaculture-hydroponics.co.uk. Manchester Grow 2013 brings you hydroponic innovations from all around the world. From nutrition to systems and from lighting to pest control, you'll find every aspect of indoor gardening here. So come on down and speak to the experts. Trade day, Saturday the 21st of September. Public day, Sunday the 22nd. Over 16s only. Entry £20 on the door. For more information, visit www.grow2013.com. Canna's mission is to help passionate growers grow their plants. Our plant nutrients have fed millions of plants all over the world and made them all happy and blooming. Daring to stay ahead of things by carrying out our own high-level research. Sharing over 20 years of experience, our website will take you into the world of roots, substrates, pH and EC. Our videos will show you how to do it and even better, to understand it. Caring about your life choices is how we know you also appreciate our environmentally friendly standards in our organic fertilizers. At Holland Hydroponics, you'll find a wide variety of hydroponic systems, accessories, plant nutrition, and the latest hydroponic innovations, always in stock. Visit a Holland store on Friday the 14th of June and get 10% off everything in store. Holland Hydroponics, open in Manchester, Burnley, Huddersfield and our new store in Flint, North Wales. Are you ready for bigger yields? Use the Advanced Nutrients Bigger Yields Growing Systems for the optimum results. Hobbyist. Expert. Professional. Grandmaster. More info at www.advancednutrientsuk.co.uk. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Before the break, the girls were each given a DIY book and asked to build a system. Having been supplied with various plastic containers and some basic hydroponic equipment, the girls are now making their systems. Let's see how they're getting on. As mentioned before, the girls have gone for a basic system which is relatively easy to make. First of all, they take the lids they are using and mark out where they want the net pots to go. The further apart the net pots are, the more space the plants will have to grow. Secondly, each of the girls drilled the holes, making sure they picked the correct size hole cutters for the net pots they are using. Once their holes were cut, they each tidied up the edges of their holes with a craft knife. Afterwards, both systems were cleaned to ensure that any excess shavings were removed. Finally, for Gemma's system, she installed her air stone and air pump. Her chosen plants are some lettuce Lola Rossa salad leaves and then filled the tray with a weak nutrient solution. To complete her system, Pooja put a layer of pre-soaked clay pebbles in the bottom of her tray. Then she planted her cos lettuce, filling her tray with a weak nutrient mix afterwards. That was that. Two mini hydroponic systems ideal for bringing a little greenery to your kitchen, lounge, office or bedroom. Don't the girls look proud? Each of the systems will now be running side by side at the Hydromag offices and hopefully we'll get a good idea of how well they work. Taking inspiration from the Eliu book, 
we also built this automatic mini dripper system. We'll be running this alongside Gemma and Pooja's systems too. For more information, keep an eye out in Hydromag in the coming issues. And now it's time for the Hydro Show news. More than two years after the tsunami that devastated thousands of acres of farmland in Japan, some Japanese farmers are returning to their land to rebuild their livelihoods. However, the nuclear fallout that damaged the farmland has left consumers afraid of buying local produce from the farms. To help tackle this, Kei Watanabe has started to build a state-of-the-art hydroponic vegetable factory and he is confident that the methods used in hydroponics will prevent nuclear contamination and help restore consumer confidence. Thanks to an innovative way of upcycling your fish tank, now you can enjoy an indoor garden in your own front living room. The EcoCycle Aquaponics Kit transforms your tropical fish aquarium into a fully productive aeroponics garden. The growing tray fits directly on top of a standard 20 gallon fish tank and comes complete with two 24 inch T5 fluorescent grow lights, a water pump and growing medium as well as other necessary fittings and fixtures. The products creator EcoLife claimed the setup can produce roughly 32 kilograms of greens for every half kilogram of fish. In an effort to grow their own produce, reduce food miles and create a self-sufficient supply chain of salad and vegetables, Restauranteur Eric Minacci has built his own hydroponic greenhouse next to his restaurant in Mount Holly, New Jersey. This means all the lettuce, cucumber and herbs come from just a few feet away from the Minacci Gardens greenhouse. Could this be the restaurant concept of the future? More and more restaurants, including a subway in Japan, are taking to hydroponic produce. The Autopot XL is a step up in size from the existing Autopot system. Now available with 25 litre pots, the XL can be used as a standalone system or an extension to the existing autopot. With a gravity feeding system for automatic watering without electricity, the Autopot XL makes hydroponic garden as simple as possible. Since starting work in March, aquaponics and hydroponics apprentices Patrick Howard and Danny Haymans have been working on a hydroponic setup at a school in Todmorden, Lancashire. The full-scale 50 metre long permanent unit has been planted and they are now growing 37 different types of vegetables in what they call a demonstration room, incorporating 400 goldfish and edible carp. Patrick and Danny, who are employed by Incredible Edible Todmorden Limited, are undertaking horticultural apprenticeships in association with Myerskoff College Preston, the first of their type in the country. A team of Stanford trained PhDs have created glowing plants using synthetic biology in an attempt to create sustainable natural street lighting. Using the glowing gene from bacteria and fireflies, the scientists have been creating glowing plants in a biolab in California and have floated their project on Kickstarter. Needing a total investment of $400,000 to reach their stretch goal, Kickstarter investors will receive a glow-in-the-dark rose in return for their support and may be part of a global shift in outdoor lighting technology and helping save millions of tonnes of fossil fuels burnt to keep street lighting lit all around the world. Still to come on Hydro Show. Grow supplies of Newcastle give us their attempt at a hydroponic mega room. And we take a look at new ballast technology with Steve from Sol Digital. All this, plus news, another competition, and more, only on the world's first hydroponics TV show. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Canna's mission is to help passionate growers grow their plants. Our plant nutrients have fed millions of plants all over the world and made them all happy and blooming. Daring to stay ahead of things by carrying out our own high-level research. Sharing over 20 years of experience, our website will take you into the world of roots, substrates, pH and EC. Our videos will show you how to do it and even better, to understand it. Caring about your life choices is how we know you also appreciate our environmentally friendly standards in our organic fertilizers. Do you want a nutrient that matches all the requirements of any plant you choose to grow? Well, let us introduce to you the aroma formula. 
So variable, it fits all the plants you want to grow indoors. Speed up plant growth. Increase yields. Trusted by the professionals. Results you can easily see for yourself. The Aroma Formula. Now available at all fine hydroponic shops. Are you ready for bigger yields? Use the Advanced Nutrients Bigger Yields Growing Systems for the optimum results. Hobbyist. Expert. Professional. Grandmaster. More info at www.advancednutrientsuk.co.uk. Holland Hydroponics, you'll find a wide variety of hydroponic systems, accessories, plant nutrition and the latest hydroponic innovations, always in stock. Visit a Holland store on Friday the 14th of June and get 10% off everything in store. Holland Hydroponics, open in Manchester, Burnley, Huddersfield and our new store in Flint, North Wales. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. It's now time for the final mega room of the series, and today it's the turn of Grow Supplies in Washington, Newcastle. That's right. So let's see if they can step up to the plate with the season finale of Hydro Show TV Mega Rooms. Grow Suppliers of Newcastle split the Hydro Show demo space into two main areas, one for growing and a tent for mother plants and clones. In the main growing area, their pot system was supplied by Platinium and consisted of four times nine 18 litre pots, each housed in a tank and tray and fed by dripper lines. Lighting the main room are four grow style reflectors. Manufactured from Miro, the reflectors contain silver, titanium and aluminium, making them weigh less than one kilogram and transduce less heat. The shape of the Grow Star has been university developed and is designed to disperse heat. The unique shape also helps the Grow Star to eliminate pyramidical growth patterns and hotspots, meaning all the plants underneath get an even spread of light and heat. The additional tank in the grow area is to feed the mother and cloning tent. Connected to this and each one of the platinum systems is a trimeter, which continuously monitors pH, EC and water temperature. The display on the trimeter is a plant-friendly LED, and the size of the display makes it easy to read from a distance. As with all measuring meters, it is recommended that the trimeter is calibrated on a regular basis, which is why Grow Supplies offered the NutriDip Calibration Solution Pack. The side lighting of the main growing area are sunblasted T5s. These low powered fluorescent tubes are ideal for providing extra light without introducing lots of heat to the grow room or using a great deal more electricity. The T5s also include a nano reflector, which tests show a 300% increase in reflected light, directing it back to the plant. For ventilation in the main area, grow supplies use two Air Force twin speed fans connected to an SMS fan speed controller. One fan is used for intake and the other for extract. 
They also supplied an oscillating floor fan to help provide some air movement. Also in the main grow area is a plug-in ozone generator which helps clean the air by literally eating airborne organic matter and thus helps prevent mould and mildew. This small ozone generator only produces a minimal amount of CO2, meaning it's not harmful to humans or pets in a room this size. Finally, to keep an eye on the environmental conditions in the main grow area, Grow Supplies provided a MaxMin hygrothermometer with temperature and humidity readings. Grow Supplies put the clones and young plants in the same area providing a Gorilla 5x5 five five foot tent with a 1 foot extension pack, this area has more height than a standard tent, meaning there's plenty of room for the Grow Spot, Grow Star Reflector's little sister. For the main growing system, Grow Supplies used a modified 16 pot platinium aeroponic system. Removing 4 pots from the system allowed them to place 2 nano dome propagators in their place. With a purpose-made groove in the propagator lid, the Nano Dome makes it easy to fit a 2-foot T5 light kit along the top with no need for suction pads or any other fittings. Again, a Maxmin Hygro Thermometer is supplied for monitoring the environmental conditions in this room. For ventilation in this tent, Grow Supplies fitted a 5-inch intake fan and a 6-inch extract, supplying lots of fresh air and maintaining negative air pressure within the room. A series of sunblasted T5s were supplied for valuable side lighting in the tent. Side lighting is especially useful in cloning and mother systems as it helps prevent plant stretching. Finally, for nutrition, Grow Supplies provided a series of nutrients to cover all aspects of their plant's life cycle. To find out more information about this mega room, see issue 7 of Hydromag, available in stores December 2013. There you have it, the last mega room of the series. A big thanks to Grow Supplies. Don't forget, all of our mega rooms will be featured in our official magazine, Hydromag. Keep an eye out in issues five, six, and seven, available online and in stores from July 2013 onwards. And finally, magnetic versus digital ballasts. Which one should we go for? More specifically, is it worth paying the extra money for a digital ballast? Well, we interviewed Steve Selman from Sol Digital, who shed some more light on the subject. I'm now joined in the studio by Steve from Sol Digital, who is going to talk us through the progression of lighting ballast technology. Hi, Steve. Hi there. Now, uh, we've got three ballasts in front of us, um, all from different manufacturers and all with different price points. Um, should we start by talking about the, the lowest price one on the end there? I mean, would you say this is where ballast technology started? Uh, these are the original uh, magnetic ballasts that were industry standard for a long time until obviously the, the digitals came along, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's the difference between these two? I mean, what, I mean, obviously there's digital and magnetic, but in terms of function, what, what changed? Uh, magnetics are uh, copper or aluminum aluminium coils uh, with capacitors uh, and igniters, that's the three main components. Obviously electronics uh, rely on chips and uh, are far more efficient because of that. Um, so as I understand it, with the magnetic ballast, the, the coils that are inside them can actually cause it to become hotter. Um, are there any other disadvantages with using a magnetic ballast? Uh, well, yes, certainly they, they do become hotter over time. Uh, obviously, um, being steel and, and coil, they're heavier for a start. Um, the heat is obviously not a good thing for a grow room environment. Uh, excess heat um, is something that you know, we want to try and reduce as much as possible. Uh, the other disadvantage of magnetic ballasts is, is they do become noisy over time. Uh, they have plates that are, are laminated together. Uh, the, the glue that they use to laminate them together in time will degrade, which means the plates will vibrate. Uh, and if you've got a lot of those in a grow room, then that's quite substantial noise, which um, you know, it's not, uh, not very advantageous. Okay, so in the middle here we have a, a silver digital ballast. Would you say that this is one of the first generations of digital ballasts after the magnetic one? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, a, a digital ballast that superseded uh, the magnetics. Again, if we're talking about efficiency, um, able to strike the lamps and bring them up to full speed within three to five minutes as opposed to the 20 minutes a magnetic ballast quite a might difference, take. So yeah. quite a saving there. And with this ballast, we obviously have more efficiency, um, better lumen output, um, and quieter, I imagine. Are there any other differences with the magnetic ballast? 
digital ballast, obviously cooler running. Um, so uh, you'll see the design of the case here uh, is designed to dissipate heat. So with this digital ballast, we've, we've got a few differences with the magnetic ballast. I mean, it'll run quieter and obviously it'll, it'll work more efficiently. Um, are there any other differences? Uh, obviously, as you can see by the size of the units, we've got uh, a smaller compactor unit. They weigh less, so easier to position within your grow room. So we're looking at uh, about a 30% uh, improvement in, in efficiency with, with ballasts that are around today over a magnetic ballast. Um, we have things such as um, uh, a restrike built into them, so uh, if there's a power failure and a lamp goes out, then uh, they will restrike intelligently. So, uh, as opposed to our, our normal light switch, which we can switch on and off without any problem, uh, if you try and do that to a high intensity discharge lamp, you're, you're going to damage the lamp. So, these kind of ballasts have features built in which will pause for 60 seconds and will not attempt to ignite the lamp until it's at a correct temperature that's not going to damage the lamp. So with the first magnetic ballast that we spoke about, um, we talked about flicker. Um, is that kind of eradicated with, with this new digital ballast? Yes, in, indeed. They'll, they'll regulate the flow of electricity so um, that they run the, the bulb at a constant lumen output uh, as opposed to a magnetic ballast. And that obviously passes on advantages to, to your lamps in your grow room um, and in turn will make them more efficient. Indeed, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so this digital ballast in front of us is a, is a 600 watt, so I couldn't use like a 1000 watt bulb with that, could I? Uh, no, you can't, but uh, again, another advancement is, um, is there are ballasts now that you can change the percentage uh, of the lamp output and indeed put different lamps in, and, and we've brought some of those to, uh, to demo today. Fantastic. Well, let's go take a look. Sure. Okay, so we've got two different types of adjustable ballast here. Um, what can you tell me about them? Uh, we've got uh, a 600, 400, 250 adjustable and a 1,000, 600 and 400 adjustable, both with, uh, with an overdrive feature. So what are the main benefits of having a, a digital ballast that can adjust to these different wattages? Uh, well, typically people will start lights under fluorescent light, which is in um, you know, lower intensity, uh, and then move to a metal halide and then up to a, a, a larger flowering lamp. So typically someone might use a 400 watt metal halide, dim down to 250 for the plants when they come from the fluorescent phase. Uh, they then step that up to 400. Um, and then maybe change to uh, high pressure sodium at 600. And then as we get onto the uh, flowering stage, uh, we've got the overdrive feature, which again uh, provides more lumens to your garden. Okay, uh, well let's do a demonstration in the studio uh, and show the difference in light intensities. Yeah, sure, we can uh, use a light meter to uh, show the different intensities uh, from the lamps. Fantastic. Okay, so in the interest uh, of this demonstration, we're going to be using the 600 watt digital ballast. And we want to show the difference in lumens between the 250 watt setting and the 400 watt setting. Um, so we're at 250 now. Um, should we do a, a reading of the lumens? Yeah, sure. From the light meter, we can see we're at about 30,000 lumens, which is uh, correct for a 250 watt lamp. And if you care to turn up to 400, you'll see the lumens gradually increase up to about 50,000. Uh, which we'd expect for a 400 watt, and it's going to take a, a couple of minutes to get up there. Okay, so from that demonstration, we can quite clearly see an increase in lumens between the 250 setting and the 400 watt setting. Um, with other digital ballasts that I've seen, they work on a percentage. Um, why is this one different? Uh, the adjuster watt enables uh, the end user to use lamp sizes that are very familiar to them, so uh, 250, 400, 600, the, the lamp sizes that the, the grower is used to. Um, so rather than being a percentage of 600 or a percentage of 400, it's something that the, the customer can um, identify with. Okay, so the lights have been on for roughly 15 minutes now. Um, it's probably a good time to demonstrate the restrike feature. Yes, yeah, so if you'd like to uh, turn the ballast off uh, and then we try to switch the ballast back on again, um, we'll see there'll be a pause uh, because the ballast is detecting that the lamp has just been on. Uh, and it will try to ignite the lamp every minute until it reaches the point where it's acceptable to, uh, to ignite the lamp. Uh, and this prevents damage both to the ballast and to the lamp. Okay, well I'll switch these off now. Okay, and if you'd like to try and switch them back on again, we'll see that it's not restruck the lamp. Mm. So the unit has detected uh, that the lamp is too hot 
Um, so it will wait at least 60 seconds until it tries to re-strike again. Uh, and of course it will uh, strike them in sequence um, as per the ignition uh, control. For more information on digital ballast, see the Evolution of Digital Ballast article in issue 1 of our official magazine Hydromag. Visit www.hydromag.co.uk where you will also find many more articles relating to features on Hydro Show Season 1. Sadly, that's not only the end of this week's show, but also the end of our first season. But don't worry, you can watch the entire season again. And as ever, here's Nick to tell you how. Thank you, Gemma. If you've missed any of season one, you can see all six episodes online at www.hydroshow.tv for a limited period only. In September 2013, we'll be running the entire season again with some new, unseen and exclusive content. Season two of Hydro Show returns in 2014, bigger, bolder and better, featuring more stores, more grow tests and more advanced hydroponics in greater detail. Look out for more information in our official magazine, Hydromag. Thank you for watching Hydro Show, and to finish off, here's some funny bits from this season's filming. <laughs> He's got a little cheese in it. Okay. So, there we have it. <laughs> Okay, that's them off, so if you'd like to try and turn it back on again, we'll see that they, uh, they won't re-strike. Should I say something after that? <laughs> C. C. I told you so. <laughs> okay, so to conclude, can you yeah. just summarise very quickly the benefits of the cool gen? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> what a lad. We're going to have outtakes at the end. <laughs> yeah, do, yeah. do you want me to summer up the benefit? Yeah. Um, dilates the stomata of the plant, which improves the CO2 up uptake. Mm -hmm. It also is shown to improve yield improve bricks which is the sugar within the plant um, and I've also um, found out as well which is, is, is dead on that uh, it can also improve the life of fruits right so which what, is very important what speed is that rotating at <laughs> <laughs> The hobby filter also features a fully reversible flange. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to do it again as well because I said something oh, before yeah. and I didn't like it. <laughs> Spider guy, you wanna laugh, you wanna cry, you cross your heart and hope to die till it's over. And then, hey, big boy, what you, what you gonna do when they come for you, big boy, big boy? That's it. <laughs> This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine.